Uh, so there was a lot going on for both and this uh, and Grace last season. Yes. And you know, I love myself some fun to Grace, so throw me something. Give me something to chew on. Okay, so I think we have to just start with the fact that I've been ghosted. Grace, go that's classic ghosting, right? So Anissa has a lot of questions. She's confused about a lot. I think she wants nothing more than to figure it out with Grace. I mean, she invited her to her house to meet her family. Like, that speaks to how she feels about her, obviously. Um, maybe she got cold feet. Who knows? I mean, she has a lot of personal things that's going on with her that we have yet to see completely unfold. So hopefully that relationship resurfaces and Grace comes around. <laughs> Anissa is so comfortable with the vigilante life. Like from the beginning she has been. Why do you think that's the case? I think Anissa just wants to fight for, for justice and by any means necessary she's going to do that. Um, I think she's studied a lot of Malcolm X and, and she believes in his approach um, even if she has to fight for it, literally. And um, that's been, to me, one of the most rewarding aspects of the show, seeing her activism being played out as a superhero. What is it about your character as far as the growth and development that you found most interesting and how are we going to see that develop in the third season? I think the maturity and the growth is what you'll continue to see more of in season three. Season one it was more so about her understanding and discovering her powers and season two she's kind of starting to perfect them and trust herself. Season three she's a woman and she trusts that. Um, she's from up under the leadership of her father. She's always you know, willing to take advice, but sometimes her ideas and her ways of doing things and her mindset is different from her father's. And she doesn't really, um, she's not gonna be stopped. 